Hello, and welcome to the third presentation of the online Corsia tutorial. This is part two of the explanation of Corsia in Resolution A39.3. Just like the previous Corsia online tutorial presentation, references to specific paragraphs in Assembly Resolution A39.3 will be given throughout. It is recommended to have a copy of the resolution available to look at during these tutorial sessions. The document can be found on the web through IKO's Environmental Sites 39th Assembly link at www.icao.int and clicking on Environmental Protection and then clicking on 39th Assembly. This tutorial is going to go through the remaining key aspects of Assembly Resolution A39.3, which sets the overarching design features of Corsia. As you may recall, there are six key design features of Corsia. The previous presentation discusses the coverage of emissions for Corsia offsetting requirements based on the participation of states in different phases in the route-based approach. Now that you understand the coverage of emissions by Corsia, the next concept to understand is how the emissions coverage changes each year compared to the baseline. As the global emissions coverage by Corsia will increase year by year, we are looking to offset that emissions gap or emissions increase collectively. One question you may have is how are we going to share the offsetting of emissions gap among operators and how will this be calculated? This presentation or part two of the key Corsia design features will discuss how to calculate the distribution of offsetting requirements to individual operators and will also address a mechanism to review the Corsia in the future. We will start with the concept of offsetting requirements. Let's take a look at the graph on the slide to help explain the sector-wide offsetting requirements. Take note that the year is on the vertical axis and the emissions are represented on the horizontal axis. International emissions are expected to grow from year to year. This is represented by the yellow bar, which indicates the amount of CO2 emissions from international aviation based on the Corsia route coverage in year Y. The bottom bar in red indicates the average levels of sector-wide emissions in 2019 through 2020 based on the Corsia route coverage in year Y. The difference between these two bars or levels is the increase of sector-wide emissions above the baseline level, which corresponds to the total amount offsetting requirements for year Y. There are a couple of points to remember to help understand this concept. First, Although all international CO2 emissions are to be reported, not all CO2 emissions count toward the offsetting requirements, which are based on the participation of states in the phase implementation and route-based approach, in addition to other exemptions as explained in the previous presentation. Paragraph 14 of Resolution A39.3 states that emissions not covered by Corsia as the result of phase implementation and exemptions are not required to be offset. Second, the bottom bar for the sectoral baseline is not a fixed value for each year from 2021. Because of the coverage of routes changing depending on the number of participating states in that year. This will be further explained on the next slide. The sectoral baseline is the average of total CO2 emissions between 2019 and 2020 with the route coverage of Corsia in a given year. It is calculated by summing the emissions in 2019, see the column labeled CO2 2019, and the emissions in 2020, see the column labeled CO2 2020. However, we are only summing the values for those routes that are covered under Corsia, which are noted in green. This may sound confusing at first, but let's go through it one step at a time using the table in this slide as a sample data point for purposes of better understanding the sectoral baseline. Emissions data for all international flights, regardless whether they are covered by Corsair or not, will be recorded and provided to ICAO for the years 2019 and 2020. The baseline emissions for years 2019 and 2020 depend on the routes covered by Corsia in the given year from 2021, and the baseline will change when the number of states participating in Corsia changes. In this illustration, two routes are covered under Corsia in the pilot phase, shown in green on the left side of the table. 
Therefore, the total CO2 emissions for those routes are summed for 2019 and 2020 separately, which are 104 and 108 respectively. These values are then added together and divided by 2 to calculate the average total CO2 emissions covered by Corsia for the pilot phase sectoral baseline, which is 106. Paragraph 11G of the Assembly Resolution A393 notes that sectoral baseline will be recalculated when the routes included in Corsia change. For example, when new states volunteer to participate. This is done at the start of each year. This can be shown by calculating the sectoral baseline for the first phase in the sample data and comparing it to the pilot phase baseline we just calculated. In the illustration, four routes are now covered under Corsia in the first phase shown in green on the right side of the table. The total CO2 emissions for those routes are summed separately for 2019 and for 2020, which are 210 and 220 respectively. These values are then added together and divided by 2 to calculate the average total CO2 emissions covered by Corsia for the first phase sectoral baseline, which is 215. So, the sectoral baseline changes from 106 for the pilot phase to 215 for the first phase in this illustrative example. This is a simple example demonstrating how the baseline will change depending on the participation of states. So now that we are able to determine the sector-wide offsetting requirements, we need to calculate the offsetting requirements for individual aircraft operators. The formula that was agreed to by the Assembly is quite simple and can be found in paragraph 11 of Resolution A393. The formula is defined as the operator's annual emissions multiplied by the growth factor, which gives you the CO2 offset requirements. The concept behind the formula is based on the fact that there are different sizes of operators and that operators' emissions will grow at different rates, yet the sector-wide growth factor should be commonly used for all operators for the first nine years of Corsia, or from 2021 through 2029, as a means to share the burden of the fluctuations of an aircraft operator may undergo in the first years of Corsia. This is defined as using a 100% sectoral approach. However, from 2030 through 2032, a more dynamic approach will be implemented where at least 20% of the individual aircraft operator's emissions growth will be used in calculating the operator's offsetting requirements in a given year. And from 2033 through 2035, the percent will increase to at least 70% use of the individual approach. The next two slides will illustrate the formula that will be used to calculate the operator's requirements in a given year. We'll start with a 100% sectoral approach, which is applicable from 2021 through 2029. The left side of the formula, circled in red, indicates the operator's offsetting requirement in a given year. The right side of the formula, bracketed in light blue, indicates the sectoral growth factor in a given year. A sectoral growth factor is multiplied by the operator's emissions covered by Corsia in that year, to come up with the operator's offsetting requirement in that year. It should be noted that the resolution provides flexibility to states in the first three years of Corsia or the pilot phase. Each state can choose either the operator's emissions in year 2021, 2022, or 2023, or the operator's emissions referring back to a single year of 2020. Based on the reporting of emissions data from aircraft operators to states, and from states to IKO, every year from 2021 to 2029, a single sectoral growth factor will be calculated by IKO, and the single number will be used universally by individual operators to calculate their offsetting requirements. This slide depicts the formula for the dynamic approach from 2030 onward, where the sectoral and individual approaches will change over time. Although these formulas may seem overwhelming at first, they are very similar to the 100% sectoral approach formula on the previous slide. Just as before, the light blue brackets highlight the sectoral growth factor multiplied by the operator's emissions covered by Corsia in that year. This time, however, 
That number is multiplied by a percent of the sectoral approach. For the period from 2030 to 2032, the percent share is no more than 80%. For the period from 2033 to 2035, the percent share is no more than 30%. The right side of the equation, in green, is similar yet slightly different in that it is using the individual operator's growth factor. The individual operator's growth factor is based only on the growth of the individual and does not account for any growth of the sector. The percent share will adjust to a higher percent of the individual share and away from the sectoral share later in Corsia. For the period of 2030 to 2032, the percent share individual share is at least 20%. For the period from 2033 to 2035, it is at least 70%. According to the Assembly Resolution A393, paragraph 11, the exact percent share of sectoral approach and individual approach for these periods will be determined by the Assembly in 2028. This example illustrates the offsetting requirements for different aircraft operators with different growth scenarios to see the effect of using the sectoral approach and individual approach on offsetting requirements. For example, looking at operator A, who is considered a fast grower, we can see the effects of the different approaches. In year X, operator A's growth factor is 20%, but the international aviation sector in total had a growth factor of 13%. Under the 100% sectoral approach, operator A's offsetting requirements are 16 million tons of CO2, which is calculated by multiplying the sectoral growth factor of 13% with the operator A's emissions of 125 in year X. The offsetting requirements of 16 million tons is less than the 25 million tons of operator A's actual increase of emissions. This is due to the use of the sectoral growth factor which is less than the individual growth factor of operator A. Under the 80% sectoral approach and 20% individual approach, operator A's offsetting requirements are 18 million tons of CO2, which is the weighted average from 80% of 16 million tons and 20% of 25 million tons. Under the 30% sectoral approach and 70% individual approach, Operator A's offsetting requirements are 22 million tons of CO2, which is the weighted average from 30% of 16 million tons and 70% of 25 million tons. So as the higher percent share of the individual approach is introduced for the later periods of Corsia, the offsetting requirements of operator A is getting closer to its actual emissions increase. Now, looking at operator B, who is considered a slow grower, we can see a different effect based on the different approaches. In year X, operator B's growth factor was 4.8%, and in the international aviation sector, total had a growth factor of 13%. Under the 100% sectoral approach, operator B's offsetting requirements are 14 million tons of CO2, which is calculated by multiplying the sectoral growth factor of 13%, with the operator B's emissions of 105 in year X. The offsetting requirements of 14 million tons is higher than the 5 million tons of operator B's actual increase of emissions. This is due to the use of the sectoral growth factor, which is higher than the individual growth factor of operator B. Under the 80% sectoral approach, operator B's offsetting requirements are 12 million tons of CO2, which is the weighted average from 80% of 14 million tons and 20% of 5 million tons. And, under the 30% sectoral approach, operator B's offsetting requirements are 8 million tons of CO2, which is the weighted average from 30% of 14 million tons and 70% of 5 million tons. We can see that offsetting requirement amount decreases for a slow grower as the approach becomes more individual based. For the first nine years of Corsia, regardless of the growth rate of an individual operator, the 100% sectoral approach will be used, or a single global sector growth factor, every year.
This slide indicates how the different values were calculated based on the formulas in paragraph 11 of the resolution in the preceding slides. Finally, we will discuss the last of the key design features of Corsia, the Corsia Review Mechanism. Paragraph 18 of Resolution A393 stipulates a periodic review of Corsia by the Council every three years from 2022. This review was determined as an important feature of Corsia so as to evaluate the impact of Corsia on the sustainable growth of international aviation which serves as an important basis for the Council to consider whether it is necessary to make adjustments to Corsia for consideration by the Assembly. This review will involve an assessment of progress towards achieving ICAO's global aspirational goal, Corsia's cost impact on states and aircraft operators, and the overall functioning of the scheme's design elements for possible improvements. A special review will also be conducted by the end of 2032 to determine the termination, extension, or any other changes to Corsia beyond 2035. We have completed the explanation of the remaining two of the six key design features of Corsia. These design features are important to determine the coverage of emissions for Corsia and to calculate offsetting requirements for individual operators every year starting in 2021. Now for a quick review of the design features discussed in this presentation and the resolution's corresponding paragraphs. Offsetting requirements are outlined in paragraph 11 and the review mechanism is outlined in paragraphs 9G and 18. Thank you for participating in part 2's session on the explanation of Corsia and Resolution A393 of the online Corsia tutorial. After completing this presentation, you are encouraged to undertake the illustrative exercise regarding the calculation and distribution of offsetting requirements in Corsia. After completing the exercise, you can also review the associated presentation providing a short explanation of the illustrative exercise with solutions. More information can be found on the ICAO's environment website at www.icao.int forward slash env.